Ahoy VC, welcome to the personal oasis. This is the Blind Island. I've got my coffee, and today we're just going to be going through some vinyl finds. Have a nice, light, easy breezy video. Thank you so much for the wonderful outpouring of comments and messages. Just saying that I needed to take some time, a little hiatus from creating videos and content. I really appreciate it. Probably still only going to be able to upload one or two videos per week but I really do appreciate all of the warm wishes and kindness. The vinyl community really is the best community on <coughs> YouTube. And today what we have playing on the Personal Oasis is Paul McCartney's Ram, my personal favorite Beatles solo album, or solo album by a former Beatle. Really enjoy it, really good morning album music. So in order to get back into creating content, I just figured a nice, easy, breezy uh, Vinyl Finds video would be a good way to break the ice, get things started again. I will be making some announcements on where we're at in the Blind Island contest, and I also will be coming out with a few more videos in my top 100 to 100 list. Um, and also be looking out for some new reviews. I know it's been a while since I've done one. So let's uh, start looking at what I got here. And I've decided I'm not going to do a lot of the cutaways. I really enjoyed just the uh, single uh, stream of consciousness thing that a lot of people do here on the BC. When I did the Comic Rema's uh, Drop the Mic, I really, really, or Chris Profi's Drop the Mic, sorry. Um, I really just enjoyed doing that and I think I'm going to continue in that vein because it's just not so much pretense put on uh, or putting on airs here. So let's get on to uh, first find. This was my most recent find and it's uh, Thelonious Monk Mysterioso uh, recorded live on tour. This was released in 1965. And it's a compilation of multiple dates that Monk did with his uh, band at the time, uh, including dates at uh, Brandeis University, Lincoln Center, Newport Jazz Festival, and Tokyo, Japan. Uh, it has Charlie Rouse on tenor sax, and his, his sax playing is just so wonderful. He has an album that he released on Strata East that I'm still looking for. It's one of the best jazz albums I've ever heard. Obviously, he took a lot of what he learned from Polonius and applied it to his own music. But this is a really, really nice album, just full of, you know, Monk's hits, like Well You Need Mysterioso, Honeysuckle Rose, Bamsha Swing. It's one of those albums that you can put on at any time and really enjoy a nice cup of coffee or whiskey. And it's just, uh, it's the loneliest month. What more can you say? I got this one for a really nice price of uh, $10 from a local record store during this uh, very difficult time. Just went and I picked it up right from their front porch. Really nice of them to do. So go and uh, support your local record store. Now, <clears throat> this next one is uh, one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, the, Bird, uh, the Birds, The Notorious Bird Brothers. Um, I got this one at an antique mall right before the shutdown began, and it was only $6. Phenomenal price. It has that, and it's an original pressing too, on the 2i label. Just showing you that. Unfortunately, a person decided to write their name on one side of the labels, but it's in such good shape. I love it. And it also came with uh, what I thought was pretty cool. This uh, Columbia stereo can be played on mono equipment. It just says how uh, stereo is possible to be played on mono equipment and explaining why you don't need to be afraid to buy a stereo record even if you have a mono turntable. I think that's a really funny, uh, <coughs> A little funny advertisement that was included in there. So, great, great pickup, wonderful album. 
Truly uh, more on the psychedelic range, but uh, the birds were the ones who were at pioneering with that alternative country rock before anybody else, and that was uh, present on this record as well. So check it out, really, really great record. <clears throat> and next I have uh, Returns Forever featuring Chick Corea, um, No Mystery. This is just really, really great jazz fusion, funky. Yeah, I would say it's not so much on the rock end as it is on the funk fusion. And Al Di Miola joins the group. This was the very first record where Al Di Miola was featured on guitar. And he is just shredding it like crazy on here. Um, Billy Preston had left to pursue his own uh, sort of musical directions, but Al was only 19 years old when he cut this record, and it's phenomenal. I can't believe he was only 19 because of the prowess that he shows on here. Uh, some people don't like jazz fusion, I completely understand, but to my ears, it just has this, if it is dated, it has this wonderfully cheesy sound to it, and I really recommend it, this record to anybody who would be interested in maybe jumping into jazz fusion. <clears throat> Next, I have uh, Alice Coltrane's Eternity. Wow, what a great jazz album. Alice Coltrane, highly underrated in my opinion, wife of uh, the legendary John Coltrane. She went on to have a discography that is full of exploratory, spiritual, ambient, jazz freakouts. And this record really is no different. It was recorded in the late 70s, and you can definitely tell that she's changing with the times while still exploring that spiritual aspect to her music. It really is um, one of the more readily available uh, listens to, the, to a listener. It's not so obtuse or difficult to penetrate. Um, if you want some of that, you can look to some of her earlier uh, Impulse albums. Um, and, but this, if you want to get into Alice Coltrane, this is a really nice entry point. It was her first record for the Warner Brothers label, and one that I'm super happy to have in my collection. I got this for $5 at an antique mall, and it usually goes for around $25, $30, at most shops around here anyway. And what a steal for me. I love this record. <coughs> Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Very good. Give me some coffee for this. Mmm. Mmm, that's good coffee. All right. Now, on to the next record. We have The Birds, Younger Than Yesterday. This is, to a lot of people, this is The Birds' greatest record. I think it's, uh, you know, somewhere around three or four. I would definitely put Sweetheart of the Rodeo and Notorious Bird Brothers over this any day of the week. It's just a little bit uh, schizophrenic for my listening taste, but it's very exploratory. Wonderfully uh, put together as far as the harmonies are concerned and the production value on here is top notch. Really, really great stuff and that iconic album cover how can you say no to that? Wonderful record, super happy to have that back in my collection. Then we have John Coughlin's Devotion. This is just searing rock jazz fusion. But I wouldn't even put it so much in the jazz category. It's just a long, scuzzed out, fuzzed out, guitar, psychedelic fever dream. I love this album. It was recorded shortly after John McLaughlin had actually done a date with Jimi Hendrix. <coughs> I'm so sorry for that. But he was, uh, Jimi Hendrix had recorded with John McLaughlin and apparently the tapes have never been released. I'd love to hear those tapes, but you can hear the influence of Jimmy on McLaughlin's playing, especially on here. It's kind of a singular album in McLaughlin's discography uh, because he never returned to this truly psychedelic bass type of uh, fusion ever again. But, oh man, just the tunes on here, especially Marbles, is out of this world. 
This is a second pressing, but uh, I got this for, I think, three, four bucks. Look at that gate bolt, so trippy, like lysergic, super cool. And usually you can pick up a copy of this, especially a uh, second pressing for very, very cheap. And even first pressings go around $15. So I would highly recommend this to anybody who's interested in experiencing uh, a psychedelic freak out type album like this. Next, I have an eBay pickup. Uh, this is a uh, George Wrestler, Still Life and Old Dreams. This was a private pressing, um, came out originally in 1982 under a different name and re-released in 1985 under this name. And if you're kind of into exploratory uh, funk fusion with moments of avant-garde uh, transitions, this is definitely a jazz album to be on the lookout for. It was never released to a wide audience, had only a private pressing. I purchased this one uh, from a local dealer for about $12. You can still find them on Discogs for relatively cheap, but I, you know, I don't know what it is about certain albums where they become the hot ticket item and another isn't because to my ears, this is really, really hot, underground jazz, and you should definitely give it a listen if you can. Um, there is a YouTube uh, link to this album. It's George Wrestler's Still Life and Old Dreams, but uh, that, that link is just really bad sound quality. I would just try and seek out a vinyl copy and listen to this album for yourself. In fact, I'm going to include the needle drop of this and uh, look for that here in just a second. All right, and back to uh, just what I recently purchased. I got again Jethro Tull Aqualung. This has come in and out of my collection a lot just because I wind up giving it away to people. People don't really recognize how wonderful this record is. It's proggy, it's hard hitting, it's crunchy, it's melodic, poetic. Um, definitely Jethro Tull's uh, masterpiece. And I love this album. If you're into classic rock, you I mean, you just have to have it. So I purchased this one for a dollar and it might go out of my collection again, giving it to somebody else, especially someone who's just getting started. But I need to have it in my collection uh, at least as soon as I give it away, it needs to be returned back to me. <laughs> um, next, we have uh, The 11th House featuring Larry Coryell, Level 1. Uh, my, last, uh, my last recent Vinyl Finds video, I found their first album introducing The 11th House, and this was their sophomore album. And but to my ears, this one sounds even better as far as the production value is concerned. Uh, I, you can pick up these records super cheap, like three to five dollars. But if you're really into jazz fusion, this is a heater. And Larry Coryell's playing on here is just masterful, mind-blowingly good, mind-meltingly good. And yeah, pick up a copy of this and listen for yourself. Next, I have uh, Manfred Mann's Earth Band Messen. I picked this up at uh, Video Game Exchange. I've shouted them out before on this channel. But this is a German Vertigo label pressing. Has this wonderful gatefold. <clears throat> I really, really love the Vertigo uh, albums. They just have this really nice quality to them. I, you know, this isn't my favorite. Vertigo album by any stretch of the imagination. I think that it's pretty good. I really do enjoy kind of the cheesiness that's involved on the album here. Um, not not a classic by any stretch, but definitely a more affordable Vertigo li label release if you can find it. Next I have uh, Al Di Miola's Land of the Midnight Sun. I found this one also for a dollar at the same place I picked up Jethro Tull. 
and this is Al Mula's first solo album, and he is just tearing it up on the guitar again. It is a, a little bit, uh, it sounds like he's still finding his footing as a solo artist, but you can definitely tell that eventually he's going to just blow up, and in his next two to three albums, he did just that. He is, in my mind, the greatest guitarist who ever lived and you should definitely give him a listen. Um, I think you've seen him playing in the background of some of my videos, and despite some uh, production value issues from the 70s, giving it a little bit of that schmaltz, that guitar is so freaking good. One of the greatest guitarists of all time. And next, this was a gift from my best friend, Nick Rep. Wonderful record. One of the one of the best by this band. Grateful Dead, The Reckoning. This is a live 2LP set where they were just really stripped down and laid bare. Oh, it has been on my turntable frequently since um, purchasing, and I've loved just to me, Grateful Dead, stripped back and acoustic is best Grateful Dead. So great, great album. Thank you very much, Nick, for giving me this wonderful album. Next, I have uh, Harvey Mandel's Cristo Redentor. I recently got into Harvey Mandel um, because of a recommendation through uh, Noble Records. He pulled this out and said that this is a really great kind of psychedelic blues instrumental album and he was not lying. I picked this up at the record store that I worked at for I think $10 and oh, it is just gorgeous, face meltingly good and I'm definitely going to include a needle drop on this one as well so that you can listen for yourself and go and seek out a copy of this. Next, I got a copy of Zeppelin 2. I mean, I've had Zeppelin in and out of my collection for years, and I'm almost back to having the entire collection again. Um, my wife really enjoys this album. I think that it it's probably my second favorite to Zeppelin 3, but everyone needs to have a copy of Zeppelin 2 in their collection. And it's a, an original Atlantic, uh, usually goes you know, if you're looking at a real dealer in this shape, it's only $8 or $7 because of its sun-baked quality. Unfortunately, Zeppelin has really skyrocketed in price recently, and people really like to take advantage of how popular they are. Um, I just think that keeping Zeppelin records at a price of about $10 to $15 is usually where you should keep it, just because of how many millions were created. But that's just my rant about price gouging with vinyl. Hopefully that uh, is curtailed soon. Next, I have one of the creepiest covers in my collection, but it's so good. This is Larry Coriel, Coriel. And this is just like face melting rock jazz. It's so good, I couldn't even really call it jazz. There are jazzy moments on here, but I'm also going to include a needle drop for this record because you need to hear it. He is one of the greatest jazz guitarists of all time. I don't understand why people don't talk about him more often. He is so good, so amazing, and definitely one of my favorite pickups from uh, this past month. Heliocentrics, uh, Infinity of Now. This is one of the first uh, contemporary albums that I bought of this year. It was released in February. And if you are a fan of new funk uh, and just crazy psychedelic space age jazz uh, in the vein of The Comet Is Coming, this is a record for you. This will probably be on my top 10 list of 2020. So good, so 
face-meltingly wonderful and exploratory. It sounds fresh, which is something that you can't say about a lot of albums that come out today. I'm going to include a needle drop on this album as well. Just give it a listen. <laughs> record by Harvey Mandel called Baby Batter. And if uh, the Crisco Redentor is the psychedelic blues exploratory album, then this is the funk, sick, slick blues album. It's groovy, it's gritty, it's dirty, it sounds like it should belong in a black exploitation soundtrack. And I, I personally think that this one is a little better than Crisco Redentor. Even though I think that you can find Crystal Redentor a little bit easier. But this record, oh, I've listened to it tons since I purchased it. One of my favorite albums in my collection. And just hot, hot uh, guitar licks throughout. Uh, included with a really, really good keys as well. So if you're looking for a nice funk blues album, this is uh, your ticket to ride. Then I have, uh, next I have Wayne Shorter's Supernova. This was, to me, the very first Fusion album. It came out very shortly after uh, Wayne Shorter had played on the Bitches Brew sessions. And while Bitches Brew had been recorded first, this actually had been released first. It included many of the players from the Bitches Brew sessions, and you can just hear this crazy, cacophonous, sloppy, all over the place uh, session where there it seems like there are a thousand ideas sprouting out at once and they have no idea how to bring them in. I love it. It's so weird and different. The, the version of Jinji on here is top tier material. Really, really good. And I just, it's not perfect but definitely one of the best from uh, that Blue Note period from Wayne Shorter. So really, really highly recommended. And finally, probably the best uh, find that I had this past month I was uh, wandering around in the antique mall that I normally frequent and came across this gem, an original pressing of the Hampton Grease Band Music to Eat. If you're a fan of Captain Beefheart, Frank Zappa, Allman Brothers, Grateful Dead, there's something in here for you. It was one of the lowest selling albums for Columbia of all time. And <laughs> it apparently was only, it only outsold an album by Maharishi Yogi. And <laughs> it was a yoga instruction album. But this record is so incredible. I've listened to it multiple times since purchase, and I only got it for $15. It's definitely dropped in price a lot because people aren't very aware of it, but people need to start paying attention to these guys again. This to me is like a, a Trout Mask uh, replica junior. So, so freaking good. I'm including a needle drop on this record as well because everyone needs to hear how jammy proggy and wonderful that it is. So guys, that was my vinyl finds. What did you think of the stack that I showed you? Let me know in the comments below. And I'm really looking forward to presenting some new material here in the next coming days and weeks. Thank you again for all of your love, and I hope that you all have a great day on your own personal oasis. Cheers. Mm -hmm.